The disconcerting resurgence of far-right ideologies in our digitally networked age, fueled by the insidious currents of misinformation and the echo chambers of social media, compels a somber contemplation on the paradoxical nature of human progress, wherein the very tools designed to connect and enlighten instead become conduits for division and the insidious reaffirmation of long dormant prejudices, forcing us to confront the uncomfortable truth that technological advancement does not intrinsically guarantee moral evolution and may in fact amplify the darkest inclinations of the collective human psyche. Deus patria familia God, nation, family, Dio patri, famile, Dios patria familia, Dio patria familia, God, Vatelan familia. In, in a recent inflammatory and viral speech, a Le Pen pupil said that the nation is like a body, foreign elements, invaders, trigger a natural necessary response. We must purge the toxins, strengthen the core. This is not hatred, it is merely biology. His words, stripped of context, had gone viral. Far-right groups amplified them, twisting scientific language into a weapon to justify their intolerance. Across the globe, in hastily assembled digital labs and makeshift research spaces, a diverse team of young scientists, the immunocoders, are connected by encrypted channels. They were the immunocoders, a diverse team of young scientists, geneticists, immunologists, epidemiologists, connected by encrypted channels and a shared mission to combat the weaponization of immunology. Anya Sharma taps furiously on her keyboard, lines of genetic code flashing across her screen. Kenji Tanaka projects a diagram of lymphocyte interaction onto the wall. Anya Sharma, his analogies are fundamentally flawed. The immune system is far more complex than he portrays. It's about recognizing threats, not just differences. Kenji Tanaka, he's cherry-picking data, misinterpreting the concept of self and non-self. He's making it sound as if the human body is a fascist state. In the face of mounting misinformation, counter-efforts and challenges arose, demanding relentless dedication and strategic thinking. The battle was not just about facts, it was about reaching hearts and minds, navigating a landscape where truth often struggled to find its voice. The immunocoders work day and night, creating animations, infographics and short videos to explain the true scientific understanding of the human body. They created animations demonstrating the intricate and dynamic workings of the immune system, showing how diversity and adaptation were its core strength. Maria Rodriguez looks up from her screen, exhaustion etched on her face. Maria Rodriguez, this isn't just about science. It's about the stories people choose to believe. They realized that data alone wouldn't win this fight. They needed to engage with the emotional currents driving the viral ideology. They created a series of educational short films that told stories, stories of individuals from diverse backgrounds whose immune systems worked flawlessly, stories about the importance of inclusivity and community. Slowly, things began to shift. People started asking questions, demanding evidence. The immunocoders had launched not just a counter-narrative, but a movement. Anya shows the team a new wave of deep fake videos. Kenji discusses the need for emotional intelligence. Anya Sharma, they're moving from biology to conspiracy. They're weaponizing doubt itself. Kenji Tanaka, we need to counter this with emotional intelligence. We need to understand the narratives that resonate with people and address the emotional drivers, not just the scientific inaccuracies. Years passed and the world, though scarred, had changed. The immunocoders were no longer a small clandestine group. They had grown into a global network.
One day, while attending an international conference, Anya, Kenji and Maria found themselves looking out at a room filled with young researchers, activists and educators. The work they had begun years ago had taken on a life of its own.